Hi guys. I just wanted to put together a really quick video just to go over a topic, um, and I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible, but it's kind of in response to the video that Sean Dodson had made. Pretty much it was a discussion, I guess, on poem purity versus using outside sources. The first thing I want to say is that the memoir is not supposed to be a story about his life. That is not what the definition of a memoir is. Uh, a memoir is not an autobiography. So Forrest made uh, the thrill of the chase to focus on only a specific aspect of his life. That's what a memoir is for. So the thrill of the chase is focusing on things that are related to the chase, not his whole life. And the second thing I wanted to mention is that People are quick to bring up the comment that Forrest has stated that all you need is the poem. Well, the fact of the matter is that comment is taken out of context, number one. And number two, although it's true that you can get by with just the poem, Forrest has stated probably a hundred times if or more that the successful searcher will have read the poem and pretty much commit the poem to memory. And to me, that means that you're going to have a thorough understanding of the poem. Because let's face it, the poem is the most important thing. You have to understand that poem. And I don't just mean read it until you can memorize it. I mean, you have to understand the phrases you use. You need to understand the, the grammar and the punctuation, just everything about that poem. You need to know the flow of the poem, the logic of the poem where the clues are in the poem, you need to break that poem down to every single word. Now, there's 166 words in that poem. And you can't just look up single word definitions. That don't work. You have to understand the context in which the words are used before you even hit the dictionary. You need to figure out the context in order to even derive a definition from the dictionary. You need to know, am I looking at a noun form? Am I looking at a verb form? And if I am looking at a verb form, what tense is it, okay? And who is performing the object? Why are they performing the object? What, you know, how does everything break up into either a clause or a phrase? You need to understand that in order to look for a definition. Now, when you, when you go to hit the dictionary, let's assume you're a, a poem purist, and let's also assume that poem Purity means that you're only using a poem, not even the thrill of the chase, just the poem. Okay, so now you're looking at the poem and you're ready to go to definitions, but there's a big problem. You understand the context that the words are being used in the poem, but there's going to be maybe 20, 30 definitions, maybe less than that, depending on the word. Which one are you going to pick? Let's say you're looking for a noun and you know it's being used as a noun. Which one are you going to pick? Um, you're talking about objectivity means dealing only with facts. What facts do you have? You don't have any facts. You're using your mind, like Decal said. You, you may have a different view of the meaning of those words than Forrest will. So, you, so, yes, it's true that right out the gate in the preface, Forrest says that he's only going to tell the truth 80, 85% of the time in the other stories, and 100% in only the treasure chest story. So he's telling you that there's going to be rabbit holes in the book, but at least we have the comfort of knowing that, number one, we're going to find out what Forrest thinks, that we're going to find out, like for my video example with the word found, what would he think that that means in the context of being used? Now, I have an 85% chance in the book that I'm going to locate the truth, okay? So if, you, if you're not using the book, then you have a 0% chance. You're not being objective. You're being subjective because you're assuming that you understand Forrest better than he understands himself. And you're ignoring the book, the memoir, that was designed specifically, not as an autobiography, but to focus on one specific aspect. And that is how it relates to the chase. You know, remember, the poem is out alone, but the poem was not out alone. It came out and was released with 
the book. The book, Thrill of the Chase, officially started, right? So I think we need a new term. And I don't know what you would call it. I really don't care. But I believe that we should do what Forrest says because he said a hundred times at least. And I even made a video and I put it, I think at least 10 quotes where he tells you how to solve the poem. Okay. He tells you to memorize the poem and then read the book over and over and over again and look for the hints. If you can't find the hints and avoid the rabbit holes, to me, that means grammatically, you don't have the poem nailed down. So maybe you need to back up a little bit and focus on understanding the poem before you try to use the poem with the book. You can't read the book and just look for errors. If you do that, you're going to find nothing but rabbit holes. But if you keep, and, and, and when I say keep the poem in mind, I mean you completely understand everything about that poem. When you read the book, you will start to pick up on things. And I'm not talking about him naming places specifically like Yellowstone or West Yellowstone. I'm saying that you will get a feel for what he means. What does he mean when he says no place for the meek? You know, for example, when he goes into Kachina Doll's uh, store, do you think that chapter is really about Santa Fe? No, it, it, it's not. Teachers for Ropes is not about Santa Fe. Okay. But when he went in that store, you know, he closed his arms up. He, he was, he was afraid, you know, because if you touch something, you, you break it, you own it, you know, and, and he left the store and immediately went into his store and put, please touch it. We are responsible. Now, I'm not saying that that chapter contains the hints for, um, no place for the meek. And certainly if it did, it doesn't mean that the, uh, the, the Kachin doll store on Canyon Road in Santa Fe is no place for the meek. That would be silly. I mean, that would be, that's not the way he does things. He appears to describe the area in the book. So he's giving you his feelings of when, when, you know, he may have been in a place that was not for the meek. So you got to look at the metaphors he's using. Look at the context. Where was he? Why did he have that feeling? That any place he names in there, the chest is not there. I believe the clues may be, but places that he named, it just seems more likely. I mean, the book was made for that reason, right? The majority of that book is discussing his past. So you have to take that kind of stuff in consideration. You know, if, if you're going to base everything on the poem, I, I think that that's a good idea because you need to focus on the poem. And I also agree that we can't focus on external things. We, we shouldn't be reading For Whom the Bell Tolls. We shouldn't be reading Catcher in the Rye. You're not going to find any hints in there. At least I didn't. The hints themselves appear to be in the title itself or a brief bio of the author is probably all that's needed. And the only thing you need to know about the book itself is a, a brief synopsis of the plot. That would have been enough to know that when he's describing for whom the bell tolls, he's really talking about a farewell to arms. You don't need to read a farewell to arms. You don't, because he told us, don't bother with any of that stuff. And that also means you don't need too far to walk. You don't need once upon a while. You don't need catching a ride. You don't need the Cra trapper's guide. You don't need any of that other stuff. The only reference material that he said you should use is the thrill of the chase. Toby at a Gypsy's Kiss mentioned something a while ago. Let's assume, and, and this is going to sound a little dark, and I'm glad that it didn't happen, but let's say Forrest went and hid the chest, and then he came home and he released the book in, in 2010, October, I think, and he passed away that night. So that's all we have is that book. That book, when he created it, was completely made specifically for the, this it's not an autobiography. It was made and designed to have the hints in there. And then he was asked, Forrest, will you ever publish separately the hints that are in Thrill of the Chase? And this comment, too, is in my video. He said, no, he's never going to publish those hints because the trick to locating the correct hints is part of the mystery. And he is not going to reveal them because they're too powerful. Well, of course they're powerful because. The, if you're if you're going to focus only on the poem, those clues are so vague that you can't possibly 
put any objectivity behind any of your definitions. Because what are you going to refer to? You're, you're, you're using your mind, and what, what are you referring to? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. I would rather go with, and follow what the man is saying to do and use the book, The Thrill of the Chase. But the primary thing is, is you have to be able to use both. And I think, like, I, I mean, the poem, I don't know what the word would be, but I, I think that somebody who uses only The Thrill of the Chase with the poem, of course, is in it. That's the official poem. And that's where it was officially released. So I would call the chase purist. In other words, I'm focused only on what the man told us to do. Read the thrill of the chase and make sure you understand the book and the poem. That's what he told us the success will be. And then take the clues once you've figured out what they really mean and marry them into a map and you will go precisely to the chest. So by not doing what that man said, based <laughs> on one single, one single time that was taken out of context where he said, all you need is the poem to me is just, uh, uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense. You, you're ignoring the advice of the man that the only man that knows where the test is number, number two, you're saying there's only 85% truth in that book and a hundred percent truth in the golden Moore chapter. So there's only there's only 100% there and 85% in the rest of the book is not good, but using 0% and focusing only on the poem is somehow better. I, I just don't get it, guys. But but let's put put that aside for a minute. Why why are we even debating stuff like this? Why do people even bring this up? I, I really don't understand it. Do, people got to value their time. And now you're assuming that your views are more objective. You you have more of a solid base by using your views than you do by using the views of the man who knows where the chest is. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Anyway, folks, I don't, I don't want this to be long, but I just want to say, you know, anybody that's watching this, what I would do is in my videos, and I'll link it below, there's a video where I basically took a bunch of comments, 10 or 15 of them, that Forrest says of what you should do to solve the poem. And I want you to see those. And I also included the one that says that the poem will work on its own. The whole, the whole quote itself. Because he's telling you that good reference material would be the thrill of a chase. So all you really need is the thrill of the chase, which contains the poem, and Google Earth or a good map. That's pretty much, I think, all we have to do. But people spend more time arguing about objectivity and subjectivity and poem purity and not a poem purist. Um, it's just, it just seems like a, a total waste of time. I, you know, there's nothing complicated here. I don't believe we need to, to waste time arguing um, over this stuff. It, it doesn't matter. I think that everybody's right. The poem purists are right. And the people that are focusing on the thrill of the chase are both right. We need to merge together and do the right thing. So. You make your choice if you're new to the chase. I'm just warning you that I wasted many years um, doing all the wrong things. Take it for what it's worth. And have a good day, folks. Peace.